get underway at 0900. All divisions make ready to get underway reports to the bridge. Reporting A Division man and ready to get underway. Bridge with Chief Smith from the medical department. We're manned and ready for getting underway. Squad department's ready to get underway. Time to take the regulator up. Fire, let's go. Electrical division is ready to get underway. DC Central reporting man and ready for getting underway. Squad department ready to get underway. Her name is USS California the sixth Navy ship to bear the name. She first left this port under sail a century ago. Now the old sloop's namesake sails from Norfolk, powered not by the wind, but by the atom. Her designation, cruiser. But the only thing old about her is the name. She's the first of a new class of nuclear-powered surface ships. 11,000 tons of the most sophisticated systems yet designed by man. Her crew, 28 officers and 512 enlisted men. Among them is a small company of men without whom California could not make its first major voyage. Some say they're rugged individualists who sail their own course. Others say they're the backbone of the Navy. Probably they're both. They are the chief petty officers, the chiefs. And this is their story. Cupola 270. Cupola 270. Cape Henry 325. Cape Henry 325. Okay, take these two. Chief and get a uh, two, two, two. Omega. Radar, compare, let's get them all together. I'm going to get some coffee on the in a few minutes. Okay. California clears the harbor and reaches out toward the open sea. Ahead lies the Caribbean and her first real challenge as a ship of the line. There are questions to be answered. How will her new systems perform? How will her crew perform? The questions will be answered soon on the high seas. This is the chief's mess. No one would dare enter this inner sanctum without knocking. Not the newest seaman, not the captain. Such is the respect these men have earned. The chief is the highest ranking enlisted man in the Navy at the top of his profession. Aboard ship, he occupies a position between the crew and the officers. He is a conduit between the two, indispensable to both. If a ship were a corporation, the chief would be middle management. And just as middle management runs the day-to-day -day affairs of a corporation, the chief runs the ship. Strangely enough, there is no written document that defines the unique role of a chief in the Navy. His role for 200 years has been guided by tradition, common sense, and the constantly changing needs of his men and his officers. Relieve the watch on deck, condition four, watch section two. Master Chief Quartermaster, Kenneth Kimball, the assistant navigator. Although he never went to navigation school, he has mastered his profession through self-study and experience and has taught it to many of the officers now in the fleet. When California's captain was assigned to the ship, he went looking for Kimball, found him, and brought him aboard to sail with him. Chief Kimball is one of the few enlisted men in the Navy qualified to be officer of the deck on a ship of this class. Point nine. My duties as a chief involve the process and the training evolution of, in some cases, seniors, in most cases, juniors, trying to train somebody to someday that will follow along in my place. My job as a navigator is to keep the ship off the rocks, avoid collision, and I train my people to the extent that professionally they can uh, do the same. Make sure we get those in the book. They all look pretty close. Lieutenant Lewis A. Nick Jr., navigator of the cruiser California. When he was an ensign, Chief Kimball was his instructor in navigation school. Now, together, they get the ship where she needs to go. Well, let's go bottom and see. 
Everybody who is an officer of the deck learns navigation by watching people do it and by practicing it. Chief Kimball is the man to watch, and he is the man to learn from. 8 o'clock closet here this morning. Okay. Looked pretty good. But the officers are, particularly junior officers, are most dependent on chiefs to teach them everything that they can ever learn about technical parts of operating a ship. The things that they learn that make them good officers, they learn from chiefs. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'll take it in and put it on the plotting sheet and see how it compares with the sun lines. Okay. Where well, you got us? Right here, Captain. We'll Captain the, Floyd uh, H. Miller, Jr., commanding seconds. officer of California. Check it out. Known by his men as one of the best ship drivers in the Navy. One of his chiefs said, there are two skippers in the Navy I'd sail to the bottom with. This captain is one of them. Well, the function of a chief, the way I see it, is that he's a technician and he's a middle management leader. He's had lots of years of experience in the Navy, otherwise he wouldn't be a chief. I think that a chief must provide training to his junior officers in particular. And that's where I look back to my uh, first chief in the Navy who took me under his wing. But John Tobin insisted that things be done right. He ensured that they were done right, and his men all understood that. And I saw that that worked very well, and I think some of that rubbed off on me. Morning, Captain. Morning, XO. This is Executive Officer Commander Fred Triggs, a nuclear specialist. He is in charge of the day-to-day -day administration of the ship. Good. Early in my career, fortunately, had an exceptionally fine chief electrician's mate as my leading chief. And I well remember the day he sat me down in the repair locker after we secured from General Quarters and said, let me tell you how it is. I've never forgotten that. Executive officer depends a great deal on a chief petty officer. He expects that chief petty officer with his vast experience in the Navy to know basically what has to be done. Very good. The California cuts through the Atlantic. Her twin nuclear reactors provide her unparalleled speed and endurance. Her helmsmen say she is so responsive she can go from full speed ahead to a dead stop within a distance equal to five times her own length. In the days when the first California sailed, the eyes and the ears of the ship were found in the crow's nest high above the deck. In the new California, the crow's nest is here deep within the ship, in an area known as the Combat Information Center. This is Senior Chief Sonar Technician Richard P. Lee. With his fathometer and his sonar, he is as familiar with the bottom of the sea as Chief Kimball is familiar with its surface. With this new long-range sonar, we don't really do that much navigation anymore, but as far as sound ranging, in other words, ASW warfare, we would go out, get the range and the bearing, just get the target. It's primarily what this sonar is all about. Today's sonar as compared to World War II would be something like comparing a Model T4 to a Ferrari. Chief? Yeah. We've got a contact over here bearing 335, range 4000. It could be that uh, wreck off Chesapeake Bay. The range of bearing sounds good, but why don't you check with the bridge to make sure. Red sonar, we have contact bearing 335, range 4000. Could be the wreck off Chesapeake Bay. Will you verify, please? I got it. Murray informed combat to inform sonar that the contact they hold is a charted wreck. Aye. Combat bridge, inform sonar. If the wreck had turned out to be an enemy submarine, the safety of California would also have been in the hands of this man, Chief Operations Specialist Dudley Locke. Still in his 20s, Chief Locke is among a new breed of Navy chiefs, those whose unusual technical skills, intelligence, and leadership qualities have brought them through the ranks quickly to positions of immense responsibility at an early age. Chief Locke is responsible for the men and systems comprising the offensive and defensive combat readiness of California. His station is a labyrinth of consoles and computers and highly sophisticated electronic systems. But none of this technology can be any more effective than the effectiveness of Chief Locke and the 28 men in his division. Basically, I'm responsible for the smooth operation and the training of the personnel who man the Combat Information Center. Just about everything that happens on board this ship is somehow related to CIC. Uh, we have a pretty big breaking point between the petty officer level and the chief petty officer level. In fact, I think you become a hell of a lot smarter overnight. 
and all of a sudden I had just a little more respect and people weren't just running around calling me by my last name, it was Chief. And that meant a lot to me. There was a time when the men who first sailed this sea had few rights and were little more than prisoners in the ships they sailed. But the world has changed. The Navy has changed. The Human Relations Committee presents their... This is a meeting of the Human Relations Council. It meets regularly both in port and at sea. Its proceedings are based on the fact that a ship's crew is a society of free individuals. And as in any society, harmony and group welfare may at times seem to inhibit individual freedom. Chief Lee is the ship's senior enlisted advisor. Through him, every enlisted man on the ship has access to the ear of the captain. Can't treat 500 people like they're one. Each person's an individual. Being an individual, they've all got their different wants or different needs. We get the people together. If they've got a problem, they'll bring it up to me. And when I bring these uh, problems up to the committee, I'm talking directly to the higher echelon, the executive officer, the education services officer, the prime movers in the command. And they're the people that can normally correct 60 or 60 to 80 percent of the problems right on the spot. The other 20 percent we work on. This ship was built to be self-sufficient. Being nuclear power, we can go for many years, well over a decade, without refueling. We're not tied to the beach in any manner. We're having that as a capability. The Navy looked to other things that would tie us to the beach and ensured that we would be self-sufficient in that we have our electrical rewind shop where we can rewind essentially any motor that we have on board. We have a large machine shop that we can repair practically any piece of equipment on board. We ran out of beans and bullets, well then we'd have a problem, but I don't have to worry about fuel, repair capabilities, and what have you on board. We're, I'd say, one of the most self-sufficient cruisers in the Navy. Flight quarters, flight quarters for personnel transfer. All hands not involved in helicopter operations remain clear of flight deck at areas aft of frame 151. All topside personnel remove hats. Almost all forward. ships in the Navy the today side. have the capability to yeah, land and launch some yeah, size yeah, or type of helicopter. We split up the responsibilities for what has to be done on the flight deck. Davis. We have to be able, obviously, Don't to work. land and launch helicopters safely. Right. We have to be able to refuel them and maintain them. We have to be prepared in the event of uh, an emergency landing or fire. For Fuel for a jet aircraft, and this helicopter is a jet aircraft, is extremely critical as far as purity and lack of water suspended in it. Daily, the fuel's chief tests the fuel, and then again he samples it just before it's put into the aircraft. And they're putting their lives in that flying airplane in the hands of that chief petty officer who says it's good. Pump it to him. Chief Lefebvre is an exceptional chief petty officer, one respected throughout the ship. Not throw anything over the side. The smoking lamp is out top side. But a helicopter is an airplane, and it's a funny airplane. It's not natural for it to fly, and it's landing on a small deck, often one that's pitching and rolling, sometimes one that's wet. The operation of any aircraft is a hazardous operation. The operation of a helicopter is more so an operation of a helicopter off a rolling platform like this is comes a very hazardous operation, one of the most hazardous things that we do. Operations, landing and launching are under control of the landing signal enlisted LSE. Fueling is under the responsibility of the fuels chief. Firefighting, crash crew, and the responsibility of a damage control chief. So we've split it up. And each of them runs his own organization. He's responsible for the training of it. He's responsible for it being at flight quarters on time. He's responsible for what it does or can be called upon to do. And it's because the chiefs and the first class petty officers are taking charge of their area of responsibility and making it work. And all I have to do is go back there and watch. Uh, that's a camp. Well done, the flight deck crew, for uh, taking that hill on board there uh, rather rapidly. We did that with no prior notice whatsoever. There are a lot of conflicts between a seagoing career and a family. Most of them are essentially the fact that you're gone for a good portion of every year. I don't like him being away so much, but that's what he wants out of life. He wants a Navy career, and he was in the Navy when I married him. 
during the time that you are home, you have to really just live a year in those maybe six months that you are there. Before Dudley has to go to sea, he tries to get everything done that needs to be. Uh, I think for her that it's a, it's a very difficult thing, especially knowing that she has to run the home, bring up Tiffany and all the other little odds and ends that I normally do when I'm here that she has to do when I'm gone. The day the ship pulls in is really exciting. I have butterflies in my stomach. Tiffany's all excited and I can't sleep the night before he comes home. It's always excitement, really. I believe my family and friends uh, have a pretty good understanding of uh, the rank of chief and uh, what it means to be a chief petty officer. When Dudley made chief, it just seemed like our whole lives changed because he had worked so hard for it and just seemed like there was it was so much more exciting. He seemed so more enthused and I seem to get more interested in the Navy no since he has made chief. You lose track of time when you're out at sea. When you keep busy, the time goes along a pretty good clip. But you do, uh, you do think of the family a lot. You just wonder what's going on. When we got married, I knew he was going to be a Korean man. There was no doubt in his mind at that time. As far as when he leaves, the feeling has never changed. It's still a big letdown. Of course, the kids keep me busy, so time goes by a lot faster. I keep occupied. I keep my time occupied. So it doesn't seem quite so long in between the time he leaves and the time he comes back home. But when we know he's coming back in, the kids have a big thing. We have a big countdown. When it gets to 10, the baby holds up 10 fingers and so on, and it's a big deal. And then the day he's supposed to be coming home, you just can't live in my house. Just about anything they'll bring up in the history books about this place, that place, or anything along that line. The older children especially could say, hey, I've been there. They live, or they have lived, what other kids have to study. When he made chief, proud of him. I really was. It was a big deal. As far as I was concerned, he was happy about it, prestige-wise, if that's the right word. Yeah, really proud of him. I really was at that time. Still am. I do remember when Charlie picked somebody in on it. This is a drill, this is a drill. General quarters, general quarters. All hands bring your battle stations for the firing of ship's missile systems. It is no accident that brought California to these waters. She is a fighting ship. Her mission is to be ready in a world that demands readiness. And so, as a fighting ship, she is sailed to a test area in the high seas to see what kind of punch she has. Warning yellow weapons tight. Tail, aye. Warning yellow weapons tight. Aye. Track 8007, bearing 355, range 19 miles. Tail, swick, warning red weapons free. Tail, aye. Warning, red, weapons free. Captain, area is clear. Track 8007, bearing 354, three. range 18 miles. Swick to L, birds free. T minus one and counting. Launch area is clear, launching system right of the fire. Track 8007, bearing 357, range 16 miles. Track 8007, bearing 353, range 15 miles. T minus 30 and counting. TM is internal. Track 8007, bearing 356, range 13 miles. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. Track 8007, bearing 348, range 10 miles. Mark India, target pass through the gate. Looks like a success. Track 8007, bearing 351, range 6 miles. Mark Delta. Mark Delta. Aye. Good shot. One major phase of California's mission has been successfully completed. Before her crew wrestles with the challenges of another phase, California anchors at St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Liberty is released from tension. When you're on deployment, you're isolated. You're on a ship doing a certain thing. And when you go into a port, then you more or less cut loose. 
you work hard, you play hard. When you're over in a foreign country, you are representing the United States. I mean, let's face it, if you go over there to a person who's never seen an American, and if you leave them with a good impression, well, you leave them with a good impression in the States. One of the reasons that I joined the Navy was I wanted to see the world. I thought it would be very interesting to see people of other cultures and lifestyles and compare them to our own in the United States. I uh, ate pizza with the Italians and drank beer with the Germans. I really thought it was exciting to be overseas and talk to other people and understand the way that they lived. It's still exciting to me when we go over. I've seen considerably more in the last 15 years than the normal person probably ever seen in their lifetime. I've enjoyed it. show in different countries, you more or less educate yourself to things that people spend most of their life trying to read out of textbooks. And if you get the experience firsthand, then you can supplement it with the textbook and you have a better understanding of people. Zero carry you left the track and then it'll just keep easing you over. All those flight, can you take turns putting on that side? You got a good fixed chief? One one six and a half. Come right, course two nine three. Right, course two nine three. Right, number new course two nine three. Another phase of California's mission is gunfire support, which requires very precise and demanding coordination between the bridge, the chiefs, and their men. If there is a central focus during this exercise, it is the Combat Information Center and on Chief Lock. 200 yards to open fire point. Three minutes to open fire. We agree on course and speed. 2,500 yards to open fire point. Two and one half minutes. Two thousand one hundred yards to open fire. Big Barry two six Charlie, this is Charlie Echo one station ready for call for fire. Grid position five seven two three eight five. Course one five five speed two five over. This is Big Mary two six Charlie Roger out. A minute and a half to open fire. Minimum gun target line two one four degrees true over. Minimum gun target line two one four degrees true out. Charlie Echo, this is Big Mary 26 Charlie. Fire mission target number Charlie Uniform 09048 over. Fire mission target number Charlie Uniform 09048 out. We're in 53030 Altitude 9 or 5 feet. Direction 29 or 5 degrees true. Troops in open. High explosive fuse quick. Main armament. One gun. Spotter just over. Troops in open. High explosive. Use quick. One gun. Main arm. Three, five, three, zero, three, zero. Three, zero, zero. Two, nine, or five feet. Direction. Two, nine, or five. Coming right to one eight zero. Open. High explosive. Use quick. Main arm. One gun.
Uncommon men, rugged individualists, professionals. They say the Navy is changing, and so it should, but there is something in the chief that never changes, and that's Navy life at sea. The love of it, the respect of it, the commitment to it. It's some intangible that has been passed from one chief to another to another since the days of sail and the first California. Listen, Captain. Needless to say, I am extremely gratified with the performance of the ship and her crew. We achieved a grade of 96.4 in gunfire support exercises and had four successful missile shots. I think that this is the type of performance that our Navy and our nation expect of a ship of this class. Well done to the crew. That's all. 